Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. We are in the fifth and final episode of our Gravity Simulator uh, series. Um, we have taken a look at a few different scenarios, uh, the most uh, interesting of which I think is the trinary star system where we've got three objects of roughly equal mass sort of orbiting each other. We've played around with their masses and velocities and gotten out some interesting things. Um, Last time, uh, we spent the episode looking at the phase space plots of the behavior of this scenario, where you're not graphing an in, uh, excuse me, a dependent variable versus an independent variable, but you're graphing two dependent variables. You get any idea of sort of how the system uh, folds back in on itself. Um, and it occurred to me after I finished recording that a better way to illustrate that would be to graph the star's velocities versus each other instead of the position, because the position, you know, is is slowly creeping over one direction or another just because of the uh, just because the, the the system has a net momentum in one direction but just by looking at the velocities uh, we'll be able to see them repeat themselves better and not just keep kind of cycling over toward one way or another so what I've done is I've changed the uh, the code and this is the version that I'll that I'll make available because I also forgot to uh, upload the code from last time. Oops. Uh, so I'll be doing that today. Um, uh, so what I've done is I've made it so that it'll graph the star's velocity. So we'll have V1 versus V2, V2 versus V3. So I've set up those uh, displays here. And then of course, all I've had to do to actually get those on the graph is change the plot command here uh, for the magnitude of the velocities. So we'll start out with the first scenario. This was where the uh, the heavier the heavier of the three stars um, heavier heaviest the 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 star with a greater mass um, is the one that we'll be playing around with the speed of it's got its velocity here now at, at a negative one in the x direction uh, or a one in the negative x direction I guess I should say so here's the animation we've been seeing and what you can see on the phase space graphs is that the, the, the trajectory loops back around on itself. So that shows you that this behavior is basically cyclic. The fact that it's moving over to the left is kind of inconsequential, right? Because they're cycling around each other. They just happen to iterate to the left a little bit. And so these phase space plots illustrate that uh, the thing is just kind of circling around, sampling the same configuration over and over again. Now things get interesting, of course, when we change it. Um, I'm going to go a little bit off script here. I was going to jump straight to negative a half, but I'm going to try negative 0.95 and try just a slight change. Um, I think we get more or less the same type of motion. Um, oh no, maybe we don't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this, yeah. So even a slight change, you know, makes these, oh yeah, that's why I didn't do that before. It's because they collide together. I should really make myself more extensive notes. Okay. Let's try something that lasts a little bit longer. Let's try putting the speed at negative 0.5. Um, we've done this before. You saw what the animation looked like, but now we're going to see what the phase space trajectory looks like. So here it's got the kind of loop that it had before, but of course things go a little uh, differently here. And uh, this also gives you an idea of when the thing is shooting off right here because um, our graphs, uh, let's see, the red one is, well, that's either one or three. So basically, yeah, so both of these graphs are going to end up, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, glitching out on us as it were. Um, let's try putting that at a negative quarter. Um, Again, this is just getting an idea of what the, the different phase space trajectories look like. So you can see these look really differently. So this one is different because of what the blue one is doing. This one is different because of what these two are doing. Um, and here, of course, it comes back around. And there's going to be a little bit of an exchange here. So we should see a pretty dramatic change in the phase space plot there. And then we'll try the other scenario with this thing at rest initially. And... Oh yeah, yeah, things definitely different. This looks like somebody's signature, maybe, or an abstract Eiffel Tower or something. So anyway, that kind of closes out the story on the on the phase space plots. But what you remember, what we have to do when we're doing a phase space plot is we have to take one of those variables and sort of ignore it, right? So really, think about these three velocities that we've got: v1, v2, and v3. The the speed of each of the stars. When you're making a graph, you've got to sort. You, you can think of it like the the configuration is moving in a three-dimensional space: v1, v2, and v3, and it's taking on any of those combination of values. 
Um, but we have a hard time, you know, making those three-dimensional graphs or even four or five six-dimensional graphs. For example, if I did want to include the R1, R2, and R3, I could make it a six-dimensional graph. Um, I don't know how to put a six-dimensional graph on your screen, unfortunately. So the way we compensate for that is with something called a Poincaré map. What a Poincaré map does is it takes all but two of those uh, of those um, it, of those dependent variables and says, okay, these are the only two that we're going to graph, but then the others we're going to say are moving in that space, and we're only going to graph a point when it crosses a certain plane within that space. What that means, for example, is if you've got V1, V2, and V3, we're only going to graph points along the trajectory that pass through when V3 reaches a certain value. Actually, let's make it V1, since that's the one that... Uh, it has a different mass and whose speed we're, we're playing around with. So I'm going to save this under a different file name. Um, I'm going to call this with Poincaré map. I think it's called a Poincaré map, not a Poincaré plot. I could be wrong about that. Um, so we're going to not worry. So we're not going to worry about having multiple graphs now. So we'll get rid of that one. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this is now no longer face space. It's going to be a Poincaré map. And basically we're going to keep the same structure that we had before. Let's make this one V3 versus V2, V3 versus V2. Only We're only going to add a, a data point if the uh, value of V1 reaches a certain value. Um, and we'll pick that value in just a second. So actually instead of this being a G curve, I want this to be a G dots because I want it to be individual dots not connected by a line. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll keep the animation up just to keep in mind what's what's physically happening. So what I want to do is I want to uh, think about having what the special value is of the um, of of the v one magnitude that we sort of take as our frozen value that we that we pick out for the Poincaré map. Um, let's do this. Let's go with uh, let's let's not make this thing. Um, not make this thing zero. Let's go back to one. I think what I'll do, I don't want it, to, I, I want to pick a value that's based on the initial value, right? Because I want it to be a value that it can actually reach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, v1 special is equal to magnitude of the list of one. So the magnitude of the velocity that was just determined. And we're going to take that, we're going to cut that in half. <clears throat> Basically, that way I know the thing will probably get cut in half. It should. Well, if it never shows up, then I'll know that I need to change that to something else. Um, I don't want to make it greater than that because I suppose I could because it's definitely going to speed up. Well, let's give it a try. If it, if it doesn't turn up any results in the graph, then I know I made a mistake. Um, so this is the, so this is the uh, value of V1 for which a point is added to the Poincaré map. There we go. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and uh, we don't need the graph 2 anymore. And this is now going to be, I think we said 3 versus 2. So 2 goes first, then 3, right? Yeah, V3 versus V2. Cool. So we want this thing to only graph this when the value of V1's velocity is 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 equal to that special value. Now, <clears throat> there we run into a problem because whenever you put an equality in a in a in an if condition, it's never going to actually reach it because the computer only interprets equal things as exactly equal, right? So we would say in normal everyday experience that uh, 2.1487 was basically the same thing as 2.1488, right? Those are basically equal, we would say. You know, it's just a rounding error. But the computer says, no, 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 that last digit was different, so they're not equal to each other. So what we want to do is we want to check whether the uh, magnitude of the velocity passes through that value. So we're going to have to define a new uh, variable. We're going to have to call a new variable uh, let's call it v1 uh, next and v1 last. So we're going to look at those. Uh, actually, let's call it current. There we go, v1 current. So we're going to be looking at these two values. So we want if the v1 current was greater than v1 special and 
v1 last is less than v1 special, meaning between the current value and the last value it passed through them. That's one way it could happen. The other way it can happen is the reverse. So now I'm going to put in an or. So this is where it's gone from being uh, less than v1 special to greater than v1 special, or it could go through the other way. It could go from being greater than to being less than. So let's put in our less than here and our greater than here, right? So if it, the current one is greater and the last one is less, current one less, last one greater. This is just adding to that Dr. Seuss book that I need to write uh, about programming physics. Uh, then we'll add this here. Oh, I do need to add my colon. There we go. <clears throat> and basically, I just have to uh, have this thing I just have to have this loop calculate uh, these two values. So the current speed, the V1 current is always going to be uh, for the current run. So I can always set that equal to val list of one. Uh, actually, I want the magnitude of that thing, don't I? Magnitude of val list one, there we go. And then afterwards, we're now going to the next loop. So the current value just becomes the last value and the last, last value we don't have to worry about anymore. Now that does mean I need to initialize this v1 last uh, back up here. Let's put that up. Uh, why don't we do that where we've got the uh, value initiated or initialized, excuse me, uh, v1 special. I'm going to say v1 last is equal to v1 special. Okay, so I've specified the value for v1 at which I'm going to add a, uh, a, a dot to the Poincaré map. I've got the v1 last initialized, and then I've got this condition set up here. Let me check my notes. Is there anything else I was supposed to uh, do for this? Okay, yeah, so what we can do now is we can run the code and uh, hopefully we'll get some dots. Um, v current is not defined. Oh, right, v1 current, there we go. Okay, cool. So we'll let this thing run. Okay, so we already got one dot here. So it's already passed through that point in the configuration. Here we get another one here. Um, and so what this is going to do is this is going to create a, a series of dots for us. And so basically that's whenever those three values are equal to, or excuse me, when those three vectors have magnitudes that are equal to this value of V3, this value of V2, and that V1 special value. Um, and so this kind of gives an idea of how the thing is behaving in this sort of three-dimensional parameter space. Where that gets really interesting is where I can repeat this. Give me one second. Very good girl, pumpkin. Yes, ma'am. You are a strong girl. You are such a strong kitty. You have to encourage the cat whenever she uh, scratches uh, her post so that she'll scratch the post instead of the furniture. Okay. And so at this point, we see that uh, this thing has... Uh, shot off. So this is probably the final version of the graph that we're going to get. Um, so what I would like to do now is I would like to take this thing and vary the V1 special value. Uh, so you can think of it like, like when you're taking an MRI. They are scanning along three dimensions. They can only show you two dimensions at a time. And so they're showing you cuts or slices uh, you know, along different cross sections. That's basically what hap what's happening with a Poincaré map. So what I can do now is I can change the initial velocity. Uh, let's change it to 0.99. Or no, let's go with a. Mm, no, let's let's stick with what I know works. The negative 0.5, and it'll give me a different Poincaré map. And then what I could do is I could sh take these things and mm. kind of increment them forward one step at a time to get an idea of how the thing looks in three dimensions. And so <clears throat> and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, a series of Poincaré plots and then I'll put them together and it'll be a nice little animation for you to look at uh, to get an idea of how these things are behaving. I need to figure out how I'm going to treat this behavior you're here with the thing shoot. So that's kind of interesting as well. So that is what I'll do. That's what I'll leave you with um, at the end of this series. Uh, before we, before I show you that, before I cut to that, um, just wanted to let you know that the next episode of Let's Code Physics is going to be the final episode for season one. Uh, there will be a holiday special, much like there was a Halloween special. Um, 
And we'll do a little bit of a recap, uh, you know, and talk about what we've learned uh, so far this season. Season two will be coming up uh, sometime late January, early February, uh, depending on how much sleep I get over winter break. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, enjoy the animation to come, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.